basically, I, I'm a scientist, you know, mad scientist in a way. So scientists always want to talk about uh, create something. Scientists also want to talk about innovation, right? So I think that it'd be good uh, for me to talk about, you know, uh, creating a, a sustainable future uh, through technology innovation. So we need innovation uh, to get down to, uh, uh, to net zero. That's the, that's the goal of counting down, right? Count down to uh, net zero. So before I uh, really dive into the details of uh, you know, how this uh, innovation is uh, uh, going to do, uh, let's first talk about the uh, 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 climate crisis, right? So everybody's wondering, uh, what is this climate crisis? Well, the climate crisis actually uh, was defined, uh, is considered uh, the defining challenge of our generation, right? Unless, unless, the, uh, the Russia and the Ukrainian war, uh, the conflicts becomes the World War III, uh, become a full-blown uh, nuclear war. Other, otherwise, uh, the climate crisis is the defining challenge for our generation. So what is this uh, climate crisis? Actually, climate crisis describes the, uh, the temperature increase, average temperature increase uh, every year. Well, you might wonder, you know, what's so bad about the temperature increase? Actually, the temperature increase uh, is really made uh, the, uh, the weather more extreme. You, you have a, a dangerous flood, you know, extreme uh, storms, right? The glacier is melting, uh, sea level is rising. You know, that's what we are talking about. So that becomes our, our daily routines, our daily lives. So that's why uh, we need to face the reality and get on uh, uh, to the solution. So we need uh, uh, events like this uh, to organize everybody, to get everybody together, so to get our act together. That's why we're all here today. Uh, thank you for coming. So now you may wonder, you know, now we understand the uh, climate uh, crisis, right? So next thing you might wonder, how do we create this crisis? And who actually did it? Well, who to blame on this thing? Actually, you cannot blame on anybody but ourselves. It's the human activity that, like uh, burning the fossil fuels, right, release a lot of carbon dioxide. It's the industrial revolution, right? Don't get me wrong, I like the industrial revolution. But on the other hand, the industrial revolution really ignores the climate change, really ignores the environment. That's the bad thing about it. You know, ever since the 1800s, right, the, uh, James Watts invented the, uh, the steam engine, right? You use coal to drive the steam engine, right? The great example is the Titanic, right? Before the Titanic sunk, it carried about 6,000 tons of coal. That's the, uh, that's the fuel that drives the steam engine, right? And after coal, what else comes? It's the oil. After the oil, there's the natural gas. All of those things are what we call the fossil fuel, right? We all, for some reason, are really uh, addicted to this uh, fossil fuel. That's the issue. That's the problem. So we need to solve this problem, right? So let's take a look at how big is this problem? What are we really talking about, right? We're talking about, uh, you know, right now in the uh, year of 2021, you're talking about almost 40 billion tons of CO2 are released in, on an annual basis, right? Now you think about which sectors release the most. Well, it's not a surprise to me, it's the power sector, right? Also the transportation sector. Also, the building industry, other industrial sectors too, right? You release a lot of those CO2. So you take a look at the first one, the power sector. It counts about 37% of the uh, CO2 released in this on one sector alone. So we need to get down to, uh, to work on those solutions. That's what we are here together, all right? Well, you may ask, right? Now we found out the problem. How big is the issue? 
we also understand the crisis already. So now you may think that, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard to come up with the uh, solutions to create a you know, sustainable future? What really, uh, what really uh, uh, you know, uh, hampering these efforts? Well, that's something we call the uh, green premium, right? Uh, Bill Gates named it, uh, it's a green premium. What happens is that uh, every time uh, you're trying to use some solution, the alternative solutions, it costs a little bit more. And nobody wants to pay more, right? Everybody's reluctant to pay more. So those additional costs, it's really hampering those efforts. So we need to work on that. How we can reduce the um, green premium? So we need to work on those sectors that really emit, release a lot of CO2. So that's where the efforts need to be put on. That's what we need to do to get done the uh, re reduce the cream, uh, green, uh, green premium. So make the products affordable, right? So next question you you ask, you know, how are we going to reduce the green premium? What is the best way to do so? That's what we are going to talk about more. That's what we are going to get to the solution. The best solution for that is the technology innovation. You know, on one hand, you use the technology innovation, you can come up with new products, new solution, uh, new business model, and so on and so forth. But on the other hand, you also can reduce the cost, right? You make the social influence, and also you make the economic impact. So that's what we need to focus on. So the decarbonization becomes affordable. That's what we need to focus on to reduce the green premium. Well, we mentioned uh, earlier that the power sector it really is the number one sector that released the uh, carbon dioxide. So let's use that as an example, right? So in my mind, in the power sector, we need to have at least four solutions, four main solutions. Ah, the number one is that the, uh, we need to have the carbon capture and the utilization and the sequestration uh, a solution. Uh, called the CCUS. So you might ask, you know, why do we need that? Well, it's because that uh, I don't think that we are going away from the fossil fuel anytime soon. Uh, we all addicts to it. We all, everybody is addicted to this, uh, this fossil fuel energy. Everybody is the insatiable appetite of use power and energy. But when you don't have any alternative yet, so you need to find out ways that, uh, well, if you release it, can I at least find ways to capture it and store it somewhere else or utilize it? That's why we need a solution in the CCUS area. Well, the other thing is that uh, we really need to work on that. Can we really get away from the uh, fossil fuel energy? So that's why we need another solution. The other solution is that can you come up some other source of energy, particularly renewable, a clean source of energy, like wind and solar, and some other type of uh, renewable resource energy. So that's what we need to do, right? That's the second solution we need to do. But in the meantime, in order to use those uh, uh, wind and solar uh, green energy, we need to also resolve the intermittency problem that are associated with those uh, uh, renewable energy. So how are you going to resolve that? That's why we need another solution uh, called a long duration storage energy system. We need that to balance the intermittency issue that uh, associated with uh, the renewable energy. So that's the third solution we need to have. The fourth one that we think we need to have is the solution that really create a flexible power demand so that we don't wasting a lot of energy. So right now, our energy efficiency, the utilization rate is very low. So we need a solution on that so that we don't wasting a lot. So that also we can reduce the peak low on, of energy, right? So what I will do is that uh, I will give uh, each of those solutions an example uh, in those areas how where and what we should innovate. 
right? Here's an example that we call the Faraday electric swing reactive absorption to capture the carbon, right? This is the MIT research uh, developed uh, a technology, a company named uh, Verdex. They designed a, a device. Uh, they use uh, polyanthroquinone and carbon nanotube. Uh, that material is it's amazing. That material has a natural affinity to carbon dioxide. In other words, they like to grab the carbon dioxide uh, when it was charged. But on the other hand, when you discharge it, they, they can release the carbon dioxide. So you can charging, discharging, grabbing the carbon dioxide, and release it. Right? So we need a technology like that. The nice thing about this technology is that they can work on very, very low concentration of CO2. Right? And also, it's cost effective. And also, can operate at room temperature. So we've got a lot of good nice things about this technology. But I also have some challenges too. Uh, right now the efficiency is very low. Uh, and I also need a, a technology to scale up. So that's where those innovations come from. We need the innovation to really to mature this type of technology. Uh, to really to make uh, uh, the CCUS work for reduce the carbon dioxide. Because right now, we're really uh, still using a lot of those fossil fuel energy as our power, our main power re uh, 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 source. So let's talk about another uh, example. Yeah, we're talking about the uh, solar energy, right? The, the good thing about the solar energy is really clean, right? But the, uh, the challenge right now is the solar energy, the conversion rate are uh, fairly low. So that's the challenge. So what we need to do is working on a technology like this Perovskite, a tandem cell, right? They can really get the conversion rate much higher. So that's what we need to do. But also technology like that have a lot of challenges. For example, they have a stability problem. They also have a toxicity challenge because they are using a component, component like lead, right? Those are the challenges that we need to work on. We need innovation. Uh, to overcome those challenges, to make the renewable energy really affordable. So that's another example that what we need to do on, on this space uh, for innovation. So the third technology we talk about here is that we really want working on some solutions, cheap, very cheap, for long duration, your energy storage, so, so that you can overcome the intermittency issue Again, uh, associated with the renewable energy, right? Here's an example of a hot rock. Basically, you have a gravel, you have a stone, crash the stone, right? You store it in one hot tank, another one in cold tank, right? As a thermal storage, it's a thermal energy, right? And then in between, you can use a compressor and the turbines. When you needed it, you can convert it to electricity. When you don't need it, you want to charge it then you can store that as a, as a thermal energy. So that's what we need to do. That's the advantage of that the rocks, so cheap, right? They also have some disadvantages. We need to solve problems like, a, like a expansion and contraction because you're heating up and cooling down the rocks, right? They expand and contract. And also insulation material, right? And how are you going to scale up those kind of uh, uh, technology? So that's the challenge that we are facing. And again, uh, we need technology innovation uh, to overcome those challenges, right? We're talking about uh, creating a flexible uh, power demand. So technology like uh, energy internet, it's what we needed. So you might ask, what is any, uh, uh, energy internet? Just like uh, our regular you know, information internet, World Wide Web, right? Well, here is that they're not only floating the technology and the information from one side, we call the generation power generation side, to the power consumption side. They can talk in both ways, right? For example, if I, as a power consumption side, if I needed something, so I'm sending a signal out so that the uh, power generation side get the signal that generate the power. So 
So you actually can use the, uh, the energy as a demanding demand, you know, use it as a demand. Once you're demanding it, they produce it. And in the meantime, they have a buffer. It's called energy storage out there. So if you cannot produce, uh, uh, you produce the energy quick enough, you can draw the energy from uh, the energy storage uh, uh, location. So that's how you can talk in two-way street. But here also have a lot of challenges, right? You got to get the technology mature. Just like information internet, it takes years, years to, to really get the technology mature. And also they have a security issue, right? So what if somebody uh, created a bug on this thing? So how are you going to, uh, to, to overcome those issues to energy internet, right? That's why uh, we are talking about that we need uh, innovation. So that's what we need to all working on that, to solving the problem. So what I did is that I just give a few examples of innovation areas that uh, we, we need working on in the power sector. We need to do the same thing with the transportation sector. We need to do the same thing for the building industry. We need to do the same thing with other you know, industrial sectors. Right? That's what we need to do. So what we really need to do is that uh, in order to create a, a sustainable future, we need to really find out that what really created this crisis, right? And then why is it so hard to tackle this thing? And what is the solution? How are we going to solve this problem? So we need to find out, you know, the zero carbon solution for green premium reduction, right? You need to reduce it. You need to reduce the green premium so everybody can afford to, to pay for it. It make everything affordable, right? And then uh, I think the innovation is the key uh, for reducing green premium. All right, thank you very much. Yeah.